Good morning again. Um, in the room right now should be all of our uh, K through 8 uh, staff and faculty. And we are going to spend some time this morning talking about the upcoming Smarter Balance. Actually, the state has called it now the Smarter Balance, the Badger 3 through 8. Um, uh, Pam uh, Plumman <laughs> is here today. Uh, she is actually here to uh, work with our uh, 4 through 6 teachers today on, on expressions and math talk, and she also does a bit of training around the state on Smarter Balance, and she agreed to um, come up and talk to you, and I'm sure she'll be much more engaging than I could be, right? So she's going to talk to you for a bit here for the next uh, half an hour, and then have a chance for you to ask questions that you might have, and I'll be here also to answer any internal questions I might be able to get to. Um, there is a, a room change for this afternoon for the Expressions at Math Talk. It's 2238. We needed a larger room, right? Um, on your schedule, I don't remember what it was on the schedule, but 2238 is where you'll be heading for um, this afternoon. So, Pam, thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. Good morning. I'm Pam Plowman, and this is my 38th year in education. I was a classroom teacher for 34 years, and then four years ago I retired and wasn't really ready to retire, so started to look for um, other um, options. I was hired by CTB McGraw-Hill to do um, content review of the smarter questions that will be on the exam. So I've gotten to see nine batches of 60 questions each plus a bunch of performance tasks. So that was one of the reasons that I'd been asked to do presentations like this in different parts of the state. Um, I work also, I was hired by the Gates Foundation to coach teachers nationwide online, so I had some training on that um, and did that for two years until the grant was over. So I've had some really cool opportunities to work with teachers over the past few years. And then now I'm also doing some consulting work part-time with um, HMH Textbook Company. So that's a little bit of my background. Okay, I guess I use the mouse. Maybe I won't. Okay. Maybe I have to use something else. Okay. See. Okay. These are some acronyms you'll see uh, throughout the presentation, and when you're looking at the Badger website um, from DPI. Uh, DAC, District Assessment Coordinator, so they'll talk about meetings with DACs and they'll talk about meetings with, you know, school assessment coordinators or individual things. The CAT is a computer adaptive test. Some of you may be familiar with that already by districts giving MAPS testing, the NWEA MAPS testing, where it levels a student. The Badger exam is going to be like that. Um, Tom's It'll just say this, so if you get confused with it, um, I'm going to write this up and send a um, link, a set of links to Dave um, following this week, and then he can send it out to people that might be interested in doing this. Um, so anyway, just look at some of those uh, different acronyms because you'll see them in some of the parts of the presentation. I think it's really important, since you're all here, and it, you are the K-8 teachers, even though you're not necessarily teaching English language arts or mathematics. I think it's really important that you're all together in helping students prepare for the Badger exam today and in the future. Um, one of the things that you can do immediately is alter some of the test type questions that you give, whether it be FIAD, it could be art, music, where there are multiple choices for answers. That's one of the things students aren't used to looking for, and that's one of the things that's changed on the Badger exam through Smarter Balanced. How many of you have experienced, did take one of the tests or mini tests that were online? Could you raise your hand high? Okay, quite a few of you. One thing that you'll notice, and if you haven't had this experience, I think it's very important for you to do that. Um, they're actually changing the website tomorrow. The date was supposed to be, um, I believe, um, Thursday, but I think they're going to open something else up a day early, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But I do think it's important that you go through one of the tests. Um, the third grade exam would be a really good choice for you to go through because don't worry necessarily about the content, but look at the 
maneuvering skills your students are going to have, how much um, uh, work they're going to have, where they, are they going to click, are they going to be using a mouse, will they be using a stylus, will they be using a Chromebook, or will they be in a math lab? Because whatever practice you give your students should be in the same type situation that they're going to be taking this exam. All right, these are some dates that were on there. Um, last week, there were webinars for all the district assessment coordinators throughout the state. The webinar, if people could not go to it, is not yet posted. At least yesterday I checked, it wasn't posted yet, but they said it would be within a week's time, so I assume this week it will be. So if you're more interested in seeing what was given out to the uh, statewide, you could actually assess, uh, look at that, and I will send a link, a set of links on this type of thing to Dave. Uh, January 16th, they were able to upload student data. That was the beginning of it. Um, to, uh, actually, tomorrow, the 21st, the Badger exam practice test is available. Now, this is the first time this has ever happened where they're releasing um, a test that will actually sim simulate the, the type of multiple choice or short answer tests that your students will take at each grade level, three through eight, and it will also have a performance task. Now, one of the things different with a performance task than in the past is there's actually a classroom activity prior to it for both ELA and math. So if you're an ELA or math teacher, you will have to have a short um, discussion of a topic prior to having the students take the performance task. And it's worth your while to take a performance task. And I'll show you an example of one and show you some of the difficulties in it. Um, I do have to let you know that if you are dealing with students that have accessibility issues, they are going to be releasing an exam for them to take practice, but it is not yet available. Um, they said within a few weeks or a month that should also be available. So there's a link in here to import other important dates, and I'm not going to go to the link right now, but one of the things is next month in February, there are a series of um, dates that will be training dates in order for teachers and district personnel to be prepared for their students to take this exam. And there's also a lot of tech um, things that are released. Okay. The testing window, as you saw, was March 30th to April 22nd. Most districts do not want to be the first one to give it because you still have all that body of knowledge that you're supposed to be teaching the students uh, prior to the end of the year. One thing for math and ELA teachers, when you look at the common core site of the standards, one thing that's very important is there are things called critical focus areas or critical areas. If you think of math, for example, if volume is one of the critical areas for a unit, and it is not going to be taught until the very last unit, your district may, have a dis may need to have a discussion that you should move that content up earlier in the school year. Uh, the most important areas that are going to be hit the hardest are these critical focus areas. And if you don't have them, I can send, I have them in a document, and they can be sent to the grade three through eight teachers. But um, they're right at the beginning, beginning of the Common Core standards. But you should look at that, because for example, if you're a sixth grade teacher, and statistics is something that is going to be hit very hard, that is one of the areas, and you're not going to be teaching it to the last couple weeks of school, you may re need to reconsider moving some of that content up sooner because you want to make sure that your students have been exposed to that body of knowledge. Okay, there are four, four basic item types and this is pretty um, normal in, a test, in testing situations. Selected response items are different than what you've seen before. So if you haven't taken the test, you should look at them. And if you, whatever subject you're teaching, you should consider possibly giving more types of questions like this where there are multiple, multiple answers or where there's a series of questions and the, and the student has to put yes or no, yes or no, yes or no for one stem. 
So uh, try to change, take, look at the test, maybe look at one or two grade levels, and then try to change some of the test items to look more similar to what um, these students will see on high stakes testing. Technology enhanced, okay? So sometimes there might be a little video or there might be, um, especially in the pretest for English language arts and math, they do talk about having the students look at um, uh, maybe a video ahead of time. Uh, for example, this won't, won't be one the students actually take, but they have a discussion prior to taking a performance task, say third or fourth grade, um, they discuss going to the zoo, okay? Uh, what does it cost? Uh, what could you buy? Different prices for, I'm making some of this up, but just as an example, because some students may never have experience going to a zoo, and some students may not realize that you have to pay to get into a zoo, and that there's different choices that they would have there. So um, that's the purpose of these pre-discussions with the students. Um, constructed response items are not at all, not at all, like the WKCE constructed response items. A constructed response item for um, the Badger exam is anything where a student actually has to input an answer. So it could be very simple. Let's say uh, it could be um, just a question in English language arts where the students have to respond with a specific answer or a title or a theme. Um, if they have to input it, that's considered their constructed response. It is not the same as what we th think of as the constructed responses in the past for WKCE. Okay, the performance tasks will have a series of questions similar to what we're used to for constructed response. They're called extended response questions. Okay, so students will have to do multi-steps in order to answer, say, maybe four to six questions on a performance task. And I'm going to show you one of those in a minute. So the constructed response of the pass is really going to be subsections of the performance task. There'll be multiple steps in there. Okay, let me look at, whoops, P. All right, right now, and I'm not sure if they're going to take this down or not. Okay, because they're making a change to the site within the next day or so. But if you go to um, the practice test site, these are the choices you have for, and I put down sixth grade. I just did this as a screenshot for sixth grade, but it's the same for third through eighth grade. Okay? Um, at the top, the training test is very short, and it's any, the same training test for grades six through eight for the middle school here. Um, down at the bottom, there is a practice test, and uh, most of these practice tests have between 20 and 30 questions each. If you took this last year, they've changed it. There are different questions there. They kept some that they thought were good. They've also added some. So if it's been a year since you took one of these practice tests, it's worth your while to take it again. Okay, and then there's a performance task, one for math and one for ELA. All right, for those of you who are teaching grades six through eight math, it is very important that your students look at and have practice with the calculators that are available. What I taught, I presented at a middle school before Christmas, and I said I would just get a whole bunch of math problems that are difficult to work with uh, parentheses, order of operation, whatever, exponents, and have the students go in and use the calculator online on the computer. Very important because they're not exactly like the students' handheld computer calculators. Um, I'll sh let me just show you. All right. So this is a link to the cal calculator practice of the test, and I actually have a screenshot of this uh, later. So this will link right to it, but what happens, and I'm only going to show you the... Um, Oh, see, it's outside of the limit. I don't know what we're on. Oh, I can't, I can't access it. Let's see. Escape. I'm sorry, I'm having a little tech issue here. This isn't my computer. 
All right, I'm having trouble here. I apologize. Anyway, the, the uh, sixth grade calculator is, does not do order of operation. Most middle school students are used to using something like a TI-30 uh, uh, where it's blue and the students have, can just input exactly what they see and it will come up with the answer. Um, sixth grade students will not be able to use that. For seventh and eighth grade, there is a scientific calculator online, but it's going to look different than one that they're used to using handheld. They will not be able to use a handheld. If a calculator is available for a particular question, they have to use the one that's on the screen. Yeah, that, that's good, just stay there. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, so we'll, we'll go out live later when I can figure out how to get out of here. Okay. All right, this just came out within the last week and it's the Equation editor item tutorial. Students need to take this. Students need to go online and practice it. But before your students do this, make sure you do it yourself. Okay, and there's directions on it. And I'm not going to click on it now because I might lose this. Um, but I will send this link on it. And it's a, a specific tutorial that goes step by step with how to click things on the test. Because what's going to happen is there's two or three ways to input things. Students can input things, um, input numbers on a keypad. Students can input um, numbers on the top row of the keyboard. Students can also click to input numbers. And sometimes it is not very intuitive, especially if they have to do things with fractions. ELA doesn't have quite as much uh, difficulty because a lot of what they're doing is more the clicking, they'll have to do some dragging, and they're going to have to do some typing. So in every single subject, if you can get your students on computers and answering questions online where they have to type in their responses and explanations, it's going to help in the future, even starting with students in kindergarten explaining their thinking. Okay, okay this is, this is um, what I wanted to show you. On the left is what sixth grade is using. On the right is what many elementary schools use for a calculator, okay? Um, so it looks a little different. The only thing is it does not do order of operation. So make sure that students know order of operation and they just use this as a tool to get the answers. Okay, this is the um, one that can be used for seventh and eighth grade, the one on the left. One thing that's different is it has the caret key, okay? Instead of saying x to the, instead of saying x squared, it has x and then the caret key, the little top um, two. So students may not be familiar with that. Um, they need practice with this calculator, okay? Okay, and I, I'm gonna try to go online to show you um, the online test. My recommendation, and this I think is very important, is no matter what grade you're in, um, I'm going to say fourth through eighth grade in particular, do not start your students on your grade level test, okay? I would even have the eighth grade start with the fourth or fifth grade test. My recommendation is have them work in partners and have one do all the manipulation with the odd problems and the other one do it the even problems if this is the first time they practiced it have them work on it in partners and have them work through the little tech issues because I've done this in a, in a room full of computers with teachers and they're raising their hand all the time because there is some difficulty in deleting in moving things around and in progressing through the um, through the set of questions so I think it's better if they don't worry about the content as much initially and then just work about manipulating through. And that's why I said to you, work through the tests. I've taken all of them from third through eighth grade and they all have different problems. The, one of the grade levels in middle school, I timed myself. It took me 50 minutes to do it because I couldn't figure out how to delete 
lines on the easily. And I've tried it on an iPad, I've tried it on my laptop, which is a touchscreen laptop, and I've also tried it on a desktop, and they all have different issues. So students have to practice on whatever they're going to take the test on. All right, let's see if I can get out of here. This, nope, it didn't. How do I get out of this view? I apologize. All right, I'm sorry. I apologize. All right, this is, this is the DPI site for the Badger exam. Okay, so Badger exam, three through eight sample items. There are sample items, there are practice tests, and they, they link right to the tests themselves. So if I go to the practice test, and I'm going to sign in, this is just, I'm going to select a grade. I'm just going to select grade three. Yes. And this may be changed a little bit by tomorrow. Now, I showed you the screenshot within the PowerPoint presentation a minute ago. If you go to the, great, the practice test, All right, you're going to notice that students have to input examples of what is the mass, so they have to input it. This would be considered a constructed response. They're constructing the answer. They can input the answers with numbers. They can input the answers with, um, with, by clicking on that um, box of numbers over there as well. All right, I've got to put something in here. All right, here's the type of question. This is why um, I wanted to show you this. This is the type of question that is multiple answers or multiple stems. Does replacing the unknown number with a seven make each equation true, yes or no? So you see it's considered one problem, but look at all the different things the students have to do with it. No matter what subject you're teaching, you could implement things like that, even if you were dealing with rules for um, rules on a... Uh, game for FIED, you're testing them, you could say which of these following are true statements, yes or no. Those are the type of questions they're going to see in ELA and also in mathematics. Let's see if I can do this. All right. What I want to do now is go back to a performance task that students have to do just so that you can see that and that'll give you an idea and then we're going to kind of finish up.
Okay, this is an example of a performance task. Okay, then I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. Um, notice, it's very squished on the screen. This is one of the things I remember making comments on. Students have a lot of reading. This is a sixth grade, this is a sixth grade performance task. What students have to do is they have to know how to um, move things around. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't want to do that. Expand it in order to read the whole thing. Then they have to bring it back. Then they have to remember what they wrote or read. Same thing with ELA. Then there's a series of questions that they have to answer. And notice, sometimes they have to drop and drag things from the left into boxes and then answer questions. Sometimes they have to use the keyboard, the, um, the numbers at the top in order to enter. Sometimes they have to type an explanation in, and this is where everyone can help. Have the students explain their thinking, have them write their thinking, have them type their thinking because that's something that we don't always do. Okay. Students need to take um, the online tutorial. Okay, that's available. Uh, they need multiple opportunities to practice with the same situation they're going to be taking the test. They need to use the same type of computer that they're using it. Do they need a mouse? Um, if they're using Chromebooks, that's what they should practice with. I had um, a group of teachers saying they wanted to put the students in uh, the math in, in a computer lab, right? And they had them around the outside of the room and they were gonna put carols in between, you know, for distractors. But I said, there's no room for the students to work and write and take notes. For ELA, a lot of times they're taking notes as they're working. There has to be room for the students to write um, their questions down, write some highlighting things down. They need to be able to have room to work. So you've got to think about that as well when you're thinking of the situation. They need practice with the online calculator and also the performance tasks with the classroom activities. Okay, are there any questions? Yes. Uh, no, they're not supposed to be timed. There are, for the accessibility, there are tech, you know, there are accessibility things, but for, the, for a student that doesn't have an IEP, um, then they would not be able to have it read to them. It's a lot of reading in all the grade levels. Yes? Okay, it is eight, it's eight week testing window. Okay, it's an eight week testing window. It starts March 30th through um, May 28th, March 30th to May 28th, I think. I had it up there, but I don't remember. Um, I think WKC's testing window is shorter you know, it was October till like right before Thanksgiving, you know, and that included May Cup. So this is much longer. But I don't know if this, and this may be a question for you, I'm not sure who dictates when they take it. I was working in Michigan last week, and they're dictating what grade level in the, in the state is taking it at one time. So I, they knew that the fifth grade group was taking it in early April. But that's a different state, so I'm not sure. Do you know? And I think it's very important that everyone um, take this because in my mind, you need more than one body when the students are taking computer um, tests. And if the problem is with the manipulation and you haven't experienced it yourself, then I think everybody needs to be there to help.
Okay, and, and actually, if you're interested in doing this, it's on the DPI website. Um, most of this is that most of this is AI scored, artificially intelligent scored. That's what it says. But there are going to be human scoring for some of these. That was the question. Um, how are these, you know, scored? Um, they're on the DPI website. They are looking for people to help with the scoring. So if you're interested in that, um, it's right on there. They're looking for people to help with this. Yes. Okay, the question is, is there an example of exemplars of what they're looking for? On the ones that are on here now, they have answers with rubrics, scoring rubrics right now for the ones that are available. And it's under, um, guides, uh, it's under the guides thing and the procedures that's in there. And they do have um, examples, but they do not have specific student examples now. I am not sure what's going to happen after tomorrow when they release the new version we haven't been told, so I don't know. Or I don't know. Anybody else? Yes. I think that that would be, they're going to have all the accommodations and testing meeting started last week, and they're going to have the training next month, so that'll all be in there now. Because right now they don't have anything out as the final version for accommodations as far as two days ago when I was looking at it so yes yes this is open anyone can do it you can send a list of directions um, I actually had a teacher send directions for this now I'm, I'm gonna look tomorrow to see if it's wor if it's if it still works for this then I'll send it to Dave and then he can get it out to you and you can send it to parents to put on the parent website. Anybody else? Yes. No, you don't. And actually, that doesn't work for this version of it. Um, students right now could pause the test, but if a student comes back another period to take it, they have to start over in this version. This also will not give them the score. Um, in the in the, in the, there is a documentation page where it has all the answers for you. So as a teacher, um, what I've told, what I've told um, groups that I've worked with is if you're giving, say, a fourth grade test to your sixth grade students, if they have a question on a specific one, have them write down the question number. You can print out the answer key, and then they, you can go over it another time with them. The answer key is available, but it doesn't score the students online because they all go in as just guessed. Yes. Uh, the way it was stated is that the, it's supposed to be, I, if you read, and honestly, the, I haven't read the final documentation because it's coming out like this week. Um, you're supposed to do the pre part of the performance test a day or two before. And it, that's anywhere from 30 minutes to a period, class period. Um, but the performance test has to be taken in one sitting. Okay? That's what, but you can pause it. It can be paused. But I don't think they can go back to a certain question. As a matter of fact, what I was told is that as, as they're going through, it may say, uh, you're done with problem number 12. Uh, do you want to go back and check any of these? And then they couldn't go back to those. So it may be the same on the performance tasks. Okay, but it wasn't, it hasn't been final. We'll know more within the next few days. Anybody else? Yes. Okay, I, that I'm, I'm not sure what the final version is, but I do know that I did take a um, full day training on this in October when they first came out. And um, in the afternoon, they talk, covered the accommodations, and I flipped very quickly through the screen. You can, you know, you can change the color for students. You can change the size of the text. You can get it in Braille. So there are things like that available, but they did not have anything finalized, and I'm hoping it's going to be out this week. Anybody else? I don't want to miss it. Yes, sorry. Um, 
I don't know. I think that's a district thing. I think that's the, uh, the district sets up that, but I, I'm not, oh, you mean the accommodations? Oh, okay. No, and I think, I think a lot of that is left up to the district. Anybody else? Top row? Yes. I think they're small. I, I, um, I observed a, a group on the east side of the state taking it on Chromebooks. I think they're small. Um, I think you can make them, you can make the size bigger, but I do have to tell you, it's just having to be able to go back and forth and read and up and down. And I took it on my iPad and the screen is probably about similar, a little bit smaller than a Chromebook, but um, I thought it was difficult, but students may not have trouble. They're used to doing, th if they're used to doing it on there and they're practicing it on that, then that's what, they may not have trouble. You know, I've got old eyes, so I had trouble. Anybody else? I'm sorry, what? Okay, I actually, I cut out a screen that I had shown. Um, basically, it's just the ELA in math, and they probably, they wouldn't be done on the same day. A lot of districts have been talking about doing it in the morning over, you know, like a couple days. I, I don't, I don't know. The problem's going to be the amount of computers you have in your district, and can you do multiple grade levels on the same day? So... I don't, I don't know. Well, initially they had said it was hours, like, you know, three hours or something for each student or five hours for each student, including everything. That's on the initial thing, but they have really shortened it. I mean, they, it's from my, from my, from when I first was working with them to what they have now, it seems like they've shortened the, Performance tasks are now much shorter than they were initially. So I think we'll, it'll say right in the accommodate. Yes. Uh, for, I don't know. All I know is that that first day, that 30 minute, that if it's a performance task. So for ELA, it might be um, they would have uh, actual script for the teacher to read. It may include you doing something on the board. It may include the students going to the computer and doing some research on a topic. This is all the pre-work before they do the, the stuff online. They would be taking notes. They would discuss it in class. Um, so that is still included as far as I know before they get to the online piece of the performance task. Uh, folks, just a, a few more moments. Um, as you might expect, uh, this is an example of um, building the airplane at the same time we're flying it. Uh, we know that. Um, and we're all in this together. Um, and we are taking the steps that we can take in order to help you and support you. An example of which, this afternoon, uh, Brian uh, Casey's group and the uh, technology integration specialist will be working with you in a uh, breakout session today to start to talk about some of those um, computer literacy type skills that Pam mentioned today and, and we'll start to work on those and start to show you what they are. Um, those same individuals are going to be on a schedule of visiting your school here over the next few months to come into your school to sit down with you to help walk you through this to give you advice on how to uh, um, to prepare your kids for the test. Um, on uh, February the 8th, the next uh, um, uh, principals meeting, we will be having a day-long training with them to talk to them about what they need to do to support you over the next couple of months in order to uh, uh, help get you through the practice test, to go through some of the tutorials that Pam mentioned today, those kind of things um, uh, that you need to do um, between now and uh, the end of March. And um, we will all um, 
I, I think that I, uh, I look at this, our kids, and I, I look at the last version of this when the NAEP standards came out and we saw a dip in scores, um, which we all care about, that's going to happen again. Across the state, it's going to happen again, right? Um, and our kids are good kids, right? They're going to perform as they performed last time and yesterday. They're going to perform well. And that we're going to uh, go forward to this together and that we're going to um, do well together. Uh, on the, uh, the question that came up on the actual testing part, I'm not, I can't give you the answer today. Um, we are looking at, and Brian is um, uh, uh, thinking deeply about how do we support you. That is the, really the key question of having his people in your buildings on the day that you're, that you're delivering tests. And we need to look at that because we don't want to have a, an issue with technology um, uh, not functioning as it should. We want to have people there to help you fix that. Um, to, to make it work well. So we have to do some uh, business where we are not having uh, everybody creating their own schedules on when the test is delivered. So we're working on what that might look like and we'll be asking for feedback from you as we go forward. Um, any other questions about what we're going to do and what we're planning on doing over the next couple months? Yes. The, the, the question is, uh, the untimed nature of it is how do we schedule out the use of technology um, carefully uh, uh, is the best answer I can give to you because I don't know, we don't, nobody knows. I mean, this is the first time this is being done and as you can see, even as early as tomorrow when the practice test is supposed to be released, the state doesn't even have answers, right? Uh, nobody has taken this yet so we don't know. So we will be, uh, um, uh, providing as much time as we think we need and we go from there is the best I can answer. Yeah, because I don't know any more than um, anybody else does. Yes? The question is what specific devices are going to be used I'm going to leave that one uh, open to Brian and his group, right? Um, he can answer it, yeah. Um, well, one of the things we learned from the ACT Aspire is the, the problem with using um, a lot of the laptops and computers uh, with that browser. The Chromebook is probably going to be the better option for us for that testing because of the ability to have a secure browser, um, lock it into kiosk mode, and to dedicate some of those carts in the elementary purely to testing during that time. So. That's the plan right now, is that we just have to take particular carts and dedicate them to testing. It's going to take them on a circulation for teaching, but we, we should be able to accommodate that. Um, we won't, I'm, I'm hoping that that secure browser is going to work a lot better. I know a lot of districts uh, that tested it this year said that was the way to go. It was a lot easier than trying to get uh, a bunch of laptops and everything else on the same page, which we did have some experiences with that, especially with student laptops. They have a lot of garbage that kind of accumulates on those, and then that, that affected the testing when they had the ACT Aspire. So we learned a lot from that. Um, we're learning from other districts around the state from when they did the practice test, and that's the plan right now. Um, if we learn anything new or any better ideas, we certainly will um, add to those, and we hope to have that done uh, fairly soon as, as to an idea, a general plan about how that's going to work. It's a great question. Uh, the alternative uh, solution of trying to schedule the computer lab, for instance, would be um, uh, ad additionally problematic, right, of, of trying to schedule time when, you know, for the whole school. So I think what we will do is the folks that come out to work with you will be using the, their uh, presentation, using the Chromebooks as the example of how to, to navigate around. So they'll have that in mind when they come to visit your schools. Yes? I don't, I don't really have an answer, Tiffany. Um, uh, I, I think it would be something that you would need to be thinking about with your students and, and as they're going through the practice test, are they comfortable? Do they f uh, feel that they're able to do this as you're getting feedback from them? So I don't have an answer. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Brian. 
Yeah, I, I think those sessions today are going to be really helpful for you because what we're trying to do is put together uh, an idea of some things that you can do in your daily practice. We're not asking you to reinvent the wheel just to take a practice test. There's things that you can do in your instruction that are going to mimic what your students are going to be asked to do on the test. So if you can embed some of those things into your teaching practice and have students, for example, uh, do typing uh, once a week or uh, start doing a dual screen when they do things online, uh, that's going to be the same type of look that they have on the test. They're going to get used to actually having to do those things online. So uh, I, I wouldn't look at this whole process as just give them a practice test a week before you take this. Some things are going to, you, you're probably going to want to start doing right now as soon as you can um, and adding what you can. But we need to start doing that. If, if you're not doing things digitally right now, I would start budgeting some time every week to get those computers, get the Chromebooks, and, and start doing that. And like I said, the presentations today uh, are going to have a, a wealth of ideas for you. Other questions? Yes. I have asked myself a similar question, uh, and uh, 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 Brian has told me that um, it will uh, uh, be fine, right? Uh, uh, but we are also going to time how many are on the system at one given, any given time. The state has done beta tests where they've got multiple people um, uh, on their system at one time, and we are also thinking, at least I am thinking about on this practice test side of it, can we put everybody on at once and see if we can make a break, right? Uh, uh, it, it would be my uh, sort of uh, tech, illiterate side of things. So I'll let Brian have it. Yeah. We have excellent bandwidth in district. Um, that's not an issue. Actually, when they, they had the ACT Aspire, there was a state outage. It had nothing to do with our uh, equipment here. Three quarters of the state lost their internet. Could that happen? Yeah, that's out of our control. Um, at the elementary schools, we're continually upgrading what we have there. Uh, we are adding in more access points, and we'll, we're going to make sure that wherever those testing areas are, that they have enough access points to be able to access the internet. We're not. Th this test is not a bandwidth hog, um, and it, for this, no. Um, you know, it, it's something that we're going to make sure of, too. I'm me saying that today doesn't mean that we're not going to continue to follow up on that and double check. And like I said, we're adding in a lot of extra access points to uh, our network at each of the elementary schools. The junior highs have been great. PJ Jacobs, we had some issues earlier in the year, and I think we have those resolved, and um, it should go fine. But it's, it, there's never a guarantee. Like I said, if we, someone takes a chainsaw through fiber optic cable that happened to us last year, and the Internet's down that testing day will be ruined. Um, hopefully that won't happen. And so there's a lot of th things that could happen outside of our control, but things that we can control, we're definitely going to take all the steps we can. Yes? Uh, I have asked Pam, uh, we had a discussion on the phone recently, and she is going to be bringing some of those into her conversations during her sessions, um, the expressions and math talk sessions, um, and that we will be making all of those things available that we will be putting out through Brian's group digitally as well as those folks coming to your school. Um, Thank you very much. Um, let, me, let me make a last comment. It's, it's 25 after, and I want to give you some time to uh, regroup before you go to the next session. Is, and I want to make sure I say this, this publicly so you can call me on it later. Um, I am on your side. I am in your corner. I am doing everything that I can to help you get through this, right? help our students get through this. Um, we will make mistakes. We are, we are going to have 
um, a learning curve on this, um, every single one of us. Uh, but we are there to support you, and I, and I really believe that our students are good students, and that they're going to perform well comparatively to the rest of the state as they have in the past. I believe that to be the case. And we will see what happens after the test is done and how our kids perform, and we'll go forward together. 100% with me there in your corner. Um, thanks very much for uh, uh, being here this morning. Um, I'll take a short uh, break and then on to your next session. Thank you.